Hi, my name is Pamela Coons, Associate Professor of Medicine in the Division of Oncology at Yale School of Medicine and Yale Cancer Center. I'm excited to announce ASCO's new open access journal, JCO Oncology Advances. As the inaugural editor-in-chief, I hope to support JCO Oncology Advances to become the premier platform to bridge the gap between accessible scientific research and clinical care. Stay tuned for more information, including new article types, at ascopubs.org forward slash JCO Oncology Advances. We look forward to seeing your submissions in spring of 2024. This JCO podcast provides observations and commentary on the JCO article, Sigma Captopurin Ingestion Habits, Red Cell Thioguanine Nucleotide Levels, and Relapse Risk in Children with Acute Lymphoblastic Leukemia, a report from the Children's Oncology Group Study AALL03N1 by Landier et al. My name is Naomi Winnick, and I'm a professor of pediatrics at the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center in Dallas, Texas. My oncology specialty is pediatric oncology. This paper by Landier et al. describes their work with 441 children with acute lymphoblastic leukemia, or ALL, who were receiving oral 6 mercaptopurine or 6-MP, during the maintenance phase of therapy. Adherence was monitored over 48,686 patient days using the Medication Event Monitoring System, or MEMS. Non-adherence was defined as an adherence rate of less than 95%. They examined ingestion habits, including taking 6-MP, never versus with food, taking 6-MP never versus with dairy products, and taking 6-MP in the evening versus the morning versus at variable times. The patients were 2 to 20 years of age with a median age of 6. 43.8% were considered non-adherent. MRD values were not available, but after adjusting for adherence and other prognosticators, there was no association between any of the characteristics of 6-MP ingestion and relapse risk. There was, however, an association between taking 6-MP with dairy or at varying times and an increased risk of non-adherence. Among adherent patients, there was no association between red cell thioguanine nucleotide, or TGN, levels and the 6-MP ingestion characteristics. Thus, the authors suggest that the instructions we commonly give parents and patients give 6-MP at least two hours after evening meal or one hour prior to a meal to be taken without milk or citrus products, contribute to non-adherence, and do not impact TGN concentrations or relapse risk. Furthermore, they suggest that the restrictions and complicated instructions increased the likelihood of non-adherence and then relapse. Specifically, as previously published by these authors, when compared to patients who received greater than or equal to 95% of their prescribed 6-MP doses, patients who received 90 to 94.9% of their 6-MP had a four-fold greater chance of relapse. Those with less than 85% adherence, a six-fold increased risk of relapse. Poor adherence contributed to a third of the relapses in the cohort study, and though ultimate outcome after relapse varies, depending on the site of relapse and the duration of time since initial diagnosis, most who relapse will die, and those that survive are at significant risk for severe long-term toxicities resulting from their salvage therapy. Overall, the five-year event-free survival for children with NCI standard risk BALL between the ages of 1 and 10 at initial diagnosis with an initial white blood cell count of less than 50,000 per milliliter is approximately 90%. However, since approximately twice as many children are diagnosed with standard versus high-risk BALL, children with standard risk disease still account for approximately half of all treatment failures, and this is a group for whom studying new approaches to therapy is difficult. There is fear associated with enhancing toxicity or interfering with the efficacy of generally well-tolerated standard therapy for patients with good prognosis, and the time needed to accrue a sufficient number of patients 
to power a randomized trial to demonstrate an advantage for the new approach may be prohibitive. Moreover, any step forward would unquestionably include every effort to optimize standard therapy and increase the likelihood of cure. How many of you have had to take a 10-day course of oral antibiotics? Did you complete it without missing any doses? Did you stop once your system symptoms resolved? Did you experience nausea in association with taking the drug? Was your physician aware of the number of doses that you missed? 43 to 78% of adults with chronic conditions enrolled on clinical trials are poorly adherent. Now imagine a toddler or adolescent taking 6-MP every night for 20 to 32 months despite having no symptoms related to the leukemia, even if the 6-MP induces the nausea. Add to this the need to take the 6-MP only in the evening, two hours after or one hour prior to the evening meal, and the admonition not to take the 6-MP with milk or citrus. It's hard to keep track of just this one drug when the evening meal ended, whether or not the child had a glass of milk after a bath, whether the adolescent chaired a pizza while playing a video game, etc. Now add dreading the battle that may be associated with drug delivery, additional medications, the needs of other family members, schoolwork, cleaning, paying bills, job-related responsibilities, etc., and it becomes overwhelming. The difficulty associated with consistent drug delivery, however, cannot trump the need. C. Everett Koop said it clearly, drugs don't work in patients who don't take them. Thus, providers need to address the nearly half of the cohort evaluated by Landier et al. found to be non-adherent, and given the data presented here, the obvious place to start is by simplifying the instructions for 6MP delivery. Stress the need to make sure that the 6MP is taken not the time of day or circumstances under which this is accomplished. Ask families to tell you how much 6MP they will be giving and on which days, if relevant. Suggest that they choose a time of day for 6MP delivery, a time when the household routine will most easily accommodate drug administration. Encourage drug administration at that time, regardless as to what the patient has recently ingested, with a responsible adult directly supervising drug delivery. Encourage the use of alarms and timers, consider the use of pillboxes, and provide your patients and families with calendars that allow them to check off doses of drugs delivered. Know that simple laboratory assessments, including concentrations of thioguanine nucleotides and methylated derivatives, and blood counts may be helpful when the results are well out of the expected range, but they do not predict outcome and will not differentiate lesser degrees of adherence versus 95% adherence. Assess adherence with each visit using a non-judgmental tone. Consider language similar to this. I know it must be difficult to give a child 6MP every day. Have there been times when you missed a dose? Please help me understand how often this happens and what leads to the missed doses. The current Children's Oncology Group trial, ACCL1033, is designed to assess the impact of these measures and others on adherence, hoping to establish an approach that will diminish the number of people who receive less than 95% of the prescribed dosing and in turn eliminate that component of relapse and death attributable to poor adherence. This concludes this JCO podcast. Thank you for listening. For more original research, editorials, and review articles, please visit us online at jco.org. This production is copyrighted to the American Society of Clinical Oncology. Thank you for listening.